So good morning, mm, my dear students. Uh, we have uh, finished uh, general pharmacology, the end of general pharmacology. And I hope you could follow the classes and if you have any uh, opinion, or the feed your feedback will be well appreciated. You can directly contact us. Then like we are moving on to the next uh, uh, topic which is the first part of the systemic pharmacology which is uh, about uh, autonomic nervous system all right so I hope that uh, you have studied the physiology of autonomic nervous system somatic nervous system central nervous system so all this nervous system and its pharmacology will be discussed uh, one by one in under the systemic pharmacology so we'll start with the autonomic nervous system. Uh, all of you know what is autonomic nervous system. Why it is called autonomic nervous system? Because it, unlike the somatic nervous system, you cannot control uh, the functioning of this nervous system with your will. Whereas somatic, you can. It's under your will. All right. Uh, this is a simple thing you know. So ANS is actually uh, as such the like it's an you know, introduction part. I would like to. Uh, tell you something about the general aspects of autonomic nervous system and most of the things you know well uh, but still like uh, we thought of uh, giving you some basic idea about the autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system uh, functions largely below the level of consciousness and controls visceral functions. This is mainly uh, controlling the visceral functions you know that the heart rate, pose of contraction, your breathing rate, your urinary bladder, uh, uh, urine outflow, everything is under the control of autonomic nervous system and you don't have any role, you cannot stop the heart under your will. That's why it's called autonomic nervous system. Now as you know well that uh, it has two components, one is sympathetic nervous system, this is also called adrenergic nervous system and the reason why it is called adrenergic nervous system because the uh, neurotransmitters uh, in the Sympathetic nervous system is basically adrenaline, noradrenaline, etc. That's why it's the adrenergic. It's a catecholamine are the major neurotransmitter. Second component, a second system is parasympathetic nervous system. It is just opposite. Or we can compare a brake and an accelerator of a vehicle or a car uh, with its sympathetic and parasympathetic. Heart rate, and like uh, as far as the heart is concerned, heart rate is increased by sympathetic nervous system whereas the uh, uh, parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for like act like a break uh, where it reduce try to reduce the heart rate and force of contraction etc so that's why it's called parasympathetic nervous system and why it is called cholinergic nervous system you know well what is the answer uh, the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine yes acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter right you said it now uh, a comparison between the somatic nervous system and here you can see the somatic from the nerves uh, it is uh, from the nerve it is directly innervated to the muscles that's why it's called somatic okay somatic whereas uh, as far as the autonomic nervous system is concerned from the uh, from the spinal cord or from the brain it could be from uh, brain or from the spinal cord there are preganglionic fibers the green part is called ganglion you know what is ganglion well uh, this ganglion is basically a group of neurons so there is a synapse and uh, the nerve fibers before the synapse is called preganglionic fibers here all these are the preganglionic fibers and we have post-ganglionic fibers, post-ganglionic fibers. Now, I want to tell you uh, the difference between the sympathetic and uh, parasympathetic major difference here is that uh, though all the sympathetic nervous system contain adrenaline or no adrenergic, adrenaline or noradrenaline as a neurotransmitter, the post-ganglionic fibers, whereas both in sympathetic and parasympathetic the preganglionic fibers has got acetylcholine as neurotransmitter. I repeat, irrespective of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system, the preganglionic fibers 
contain acetylcholine as neurotransmitter. Is that clear? Whereas when you come to the post ganglionic fibers, uh, as far as the adrenergic nervous system is concerned, noradrenaline or adrenaline are the neurotransmitter, mainly the noradrenaline is the neurotransmi neurotransmitter. Whereas uh, the post ganglionic fibers of the parasympathetic nervous system were the acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter. So that's why it is named as adrenergic and cholinergic. And apart from this, where else you find adrenaline and noradrenaline? You know that uh, adrenal medulla, the gland just above your uh, renal tissue, the post uh, adrenal, uh, I mean the post renal endocrine part is called adrenal gland. So adrenal medulla is responsible for the uh, synthesis of adrenaline and noradrenaline. You know well, that's another source. Fine. And this post ganglion fibers are innervated on the various uh, visceral area, especially heart, blood vessels, intestine, okay, eye, especially the uh, extraocular muscles and intraocular muscles, then uh, glands, especially the exocrine glands, okay. So this is how the things uh, are innervated, and this slide is intended to convey that the preganglionic fibers of all the sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers connecting to uh, the intestine. So, how long it is from the brain to your intestine? Okay, maybe around the th uh, 30, 40, or uh, up to 50 centimeter, 50 more than, or more, even more than uh, length. That length may be there. And this is not a single fiber. Okay, and this has got a group of fibers uh, one by one, and the in between synapse is there. And through synapse, the message or the impulse is passed via with the help of neurotransmitter. There come the importance of neurotransmitter. So these are uh, fibers, number of fibers connected each other through a synapse and uh, through the synapse the impulses are passed with the help of neurotransmitter. Okay. So this is what happening uh, as far as the neurotransmitter is concerned. So I would say that the principle or the functional component, of, of course the nerve is a structural component of any uh, nervous system, definitely I agree, but uh, without the neurotransmitter, the none of these nervous system become functional. So you have to be uh, aware about the importance of neurotransmitter. Definitely we have two uh, components of the n autonomic nervous system, one is uh, sympathetic and the other one is parasympathetic. And when you discuss about the cholinergic or the parasympathetic nervous system, I told you since the neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nervous system is uh, acetylcholine, this is also called as cholinergic uh, nervous system and the cholinergic transmission, here we are going to discuss. Now, uh, since nerves arise from the cranial region as well as from the sacral region, hence this is named as craniosacral outflow, craniosacral outflow, right. Uh, so uh, you can see. Choline, okay. Choline is combined with uh, acetyl-CoA. Choline is combined with uh, acetyl-CoA. Basically, the choline is uh, present outside the axoplasm, so it has to be transported into the axoplasm. This is imagine this is a uh, axon, termin terminal of an axon, and uh, this choline plus acetyl CoA together form acetyl choline, and this acetyl choline is uh, get into the vesicle. So usually all the neurotransmitters are stored in the vesicle, and whenever uh, it is required, it is released from the vesicle. So vesicle is considered a storage form, all right, a st structural form of the storage, um, so and the enzyme involved for the synthesis of uh, acetylcholine from choline and acetyl CoA, and I think uh, the uh, they are not mentioned, they are not pointed out the acetyl CoA, and here the acetyl CoA is also there. Choline acetyl transferase. I repeat, choline acetyl transferase. This is the enzyme, and uh, of once the acetylcholine is formed, it is transported into the uh, vesicle. Now, what happened? Whenever an action potential reach here, this will be usually this will be in a resting stage. And uh, when the action potential reach here, uh, uh, there are plenty of there are plenty of uh, 
voltage gated calcium channel and what happened when the action potential reached here again that is also not depicted here uh, so what happened when the rusty membrane potential become active uh, uh, action potential reach in the, uh, this can open the voltage gated calcium channel and leads to influx of calcium and this calcium can destabilize uh, the uh, membrane of the vesicle and leads to release okay which leads to release of acetylcholine into synapse release to where synapse and this is synapse and this is called presynaptic membrane and this is called postsynaptic membrane so this presynaptic membrane can be of terminal uh, the end organ sorry post postsynaptic membrane could be a terminal organ or a next neuron okay um, so acetylcholine and here you can see some of the muscarinic receptor uh, some of the receptor we will explain those things later and it has got a, a negative feedback when it bind on the muscarinic or the receptor it will inhibit further release and the same acetylcholine can act on the postsynaptic membrane there are different types of receptor all these things will be discussed later okay there are receptor postsynaptic receptor and one more thing i wanted to tell you here botulinum toxin actually inhibit the release of neurotransmitter botulinum toxin can inhibit the release of neurotransmitter therefore it can produce some sort of skeletal muscle relaxation all right and generally uh, i want to tell you something like uh, this ach can act for a fraction of second all the neurotransmitters are like that it can act only for a few uh, seconds or a fraction of second immediately it can be either taken away or it is metabolized by some enzyme as far as the acetylcholine is concerned the most important uh, mechanism for its termination is choline esterase or you also learn that acetylcholine esterase okay again the detail will be discussed when we discuss about uh, uh, discuss uh, we'll be discussing about these choline esterase inhibitors in the uh, coming classes so uh, be patient so, uh, okay so this is a structure so we can discuss the neurotransmitter under synthesis synthesis storage release and termination i hope you remember these four stages synthesis storage release and termination synthesis yes choline is transported into the axoplasm there it combine with the uh, acetylcholine and form uh, acetylcholine sorry it combine with the co uh, acetyl coa coa acetyl coa with the choline and form acetylcholine with the help of choline acetyl transport and this is synthesis second part is storage storage is inside the vesicle okay so it is stored in the vesicle so it is actively transported into the vesicle and it is safe uh, unless an action potential reach here so when an action potential reach next is release when the stored neurotransmitter is released when an action potential reach here uh, it can leads to opening of calcium channel voltage gated calcium channel leads to influx of calcium and the influx of calcium leads to destabilization of the membrane of the vesicle and causes release so the release is also over now uh, we can talk about like action is basically it's on the postsynaptic membrane that is on the receptors and immediately this action will be terminated because it's a neurotransmitter terminated by choline esterase so this is a pathway of pathway of uh, uh, synthesis of neurotransmitter especially the acetylcholine all right so when we discuss about the 